In the last decade and a half, it's become infinitely easier to obtain exactly what you're looking for. Well, by way of a couple keystrokes, that is. The internet has made it all too simple to use a computer to change reality. An abundance of information is merely a search engine away to the point where it's hard to imagine life is any different. Yet, a generation ago, when the words streaming and turrent were saved for conversations about water and when people met face to face were software swap parties, trading games and applications on sharpie labeled five and a half quarter inch floppies. Of course, most of the times, meets were a frugal way for community-minded individuals to trade popular games like King's Quest and Manic Mansion amongst themselves. However, a few early programming talents described designed their own computer games to share amongst their circle of acquaintances, who in turn would pass it on until the fun and well-designed enough games were independently developed and had its place among the collections of aficionados across the country. Think of it the 80s equivalent of a viral video. Pale Luna, on the other hand, was never circulated outside the San Francisco Bay Area. All known copies has long been all disposed of. All computers that have ever ran the game, uh, debris lays under layers and layers of filth and polyester. This fact has attributed to a number of... This fact is, well, attributed to a number of abstruse design choices made by the programmer. Pale Luna was a text adventure in the vein of Zork and the lurking horror, at the time when the said genre was swiftly going out of fashion. Upon booting up at this program, the player was presented with a screen that was almost completely dark except for the text that read, You are in a dark room. Moonlight shines through the window. There is gold in the corner, along with a shovel and a rope. There is a door in the east. Command? So began the game that one writer for a long, out-of-print franchise described as animatic, nonsensical, and completely unplayable. As the only commands the game would accept were, pick up gold, pick up shovel, pick up rope, open door, go east. The player was soon presented with the following. Reap your reward. Pale Luna smiles at you. You are in a forest. There are paths to the north, west, and east. Command? What quickly infuriated the few players who've played the game was the confusing and buggy nature of the second screen onward. The only one of the directional decisions that would be correct, for example, on occasion, a command to go in a direction other than north would lead to the system freezing, requiring the operator to do a hard reboot on the entire computer. Further than any subsequent scene seemed to be a merely repeat of the above text, with the difference being only the directions available. Worse still, the standard text adventure commands appeared to be useless. The only adapted non-movement related prompt were use gold, which caused the game to display the message. Not here. Use shovel, which brought up not now. And use rope, which prompted the text. You've already used this. Most who play the game progress a couple of screens into it before becoming fed up by constantly having to reboot and tossing the dis disc in disgust. Writing it off as an experience of a shoddy program farce. However, there is one thing about the world of computers that remains true. No matter what the era, some people who use them have way too much time on their hands. A young name by the name a young man by the name of Michael Navens decided to see if there is more to Pale Luna than what meets the eye. Five hours and thirty-three screens worth of trial and error, and unplugged computer cords later, he finally managed to make the game display a different text. The text is now reading Pale Luna smiles wide. There are no paths. Pale Luna smiles wide. The ground is soft. Pale Luna smiles wide. Here, command. It was another hour before Naven stumbled upon the proper commands and phrases to make the game progress any further. Dig hole, drop gold, fill hole, which causes the screen to display. Congratulations. Four zero point two four two four eight. Negative one two one point four four three four. 
Upon which, the game ceases to accept commands, requiring the user to reboot one last time. After some deliberation, Navis came to the conclusion that the numbers referred to lines of longitude and latitude, the coordinates that led to a point on a sprawling forest that was dominated by the nearby Laysan Volcanic Park. As he possessed way too much time then, well, since, Navis vowed to see Pale Luna to its ending. The next day, armed with a map, a compass, and a shovel, he navigated the park trails, noting with amusement how each turn corresponded roughly with those that he took in the game. Though he initially regretted bringing the cumbersome digging tool on a mere hunch, the path similarly but all confirmed his suspicions that the journey would end with him face to face with eccentric buried treasure. Out of breath, after the tricky struggle to the coordinates, he was pleasantly surprised by a literal stumble upon a patch of uneven dirt. Shoveling as excitedly as he was, it would be an understatement to say he was taken back when the heavy strokes unearthed a badly decomposing head of a blonde-haired little girl. Navis promptly reported the situation to the authorities. The little girl was identified as Karen Poulsen, age 11 reported missing to the San Diego Police Department a year and a half prior. The efforts were made to track down a programmer, Pale Luna, but the nearly anonymous legal gray area in which the software swapping community operated in was inescapably led to many dead ends. The collectors have been known to offer up words of six figures for an authentic copy of the game. The rest of Karen's body was never